Before there was a drum, there was someone clapping or playing with their hands. So it is the, the oldest instrument and next to the voice. It's the oldest instrument in the world. It's the hands. You know, there's a, always, so before the drum, same thing, you know. You hit the drum, you use your hands. I mean, it's difficult to claim inventing using your hands for music is not possible. Every, everyone who has two hands makes makes music with their hands, you know, even if it's, you know, the same with the feats. So I, I, I can't take responsibility for, for this, this is wrong. But for me, if I don't have a drum, it doesn't stop the music. You can still make the music. You know, just you say it. No, no, no. So it's no different than this or clapping. For, for me, I think it's the same. Music in our life is, uh, is the soundtrack to our experiences. It is the soundtrack that surrounds us. It helps us remember you know, the things, how they smell, sound, taste, touch. It's easy to remember um, if there's music attached to it. Sometimes you listen to a song and it will take you to a place that you know, brings a tear to your eye because it, it reminds you of something emotional for you, you know, or happy, or something that was frightening, like your very first kiss was like, you know, like this. There's a song in your head that goes with this moment. So I think uh, music is very important to our lives. If our life was a movie, it would be the soundtrack. But music can be for love or for loss of love or no love at all. In humanity right now is many tribes that are lost. They have lost their common language to, to um, appreciate each other. And I think that music is one of the languages that is left that can bring people together you know, in a circle, dance, any style of dance, we all can understand the rhythm, we all can feel uh, our mother's heartbeat, you know? we all know this feeling, so this is the one language that we all can agree on, it's the only one, everything else is subtleties and differences, and, uh, and different meanings and different customs, but music is, is universal for the human people. Even I have students that are blind who can't see. I have students that can't hear, but can feel the vibrations, and they can still take part in the, in the celebration of music. So I do believe that music is the only thing that uh, we can come together with. Most tribes, most people have a cultural music that they all agree on, and it, and it, and it verifies that they are special with each other. They are a part of a group. Um, the common language for all humans, we have lost contact with each other. So we don't have a common song, but we still have a common language. So it's important that we um, find a way to include everyone's opinion on the music. It's very important to, to maintain one's uh, to maintain your um, identity in, the, in, your own, in your music so that you can share it with the world. You know, if we're only listening to one song, there are a lot of people who are not being heard. So it's important to me as I travel in, in the world and I'm meeting uh, musicians and artists and regular people in the audiences all over the world, it's important to me that I hear their voices, I hear their music, I taste their food, so I can appreciate them. You know, I, I've been saying this week that I don't come to Krasnodar so I can see the Eiffel Tower. You know, I don't, I don't come 
to Krasnodar so I can hear Pavarati, you know, if you will say that one, of course. I don't come, I don't come to Krasnodar because I want to hear hip hop from someone in Brooklyn, New York. I come to Krasnodar because I want to hear and feel and smell and taste and enjoy the people that are here. And if they are not true to making their music and making their food and making their opinion heard, we lose contact with these people in the language of music. So when I come to Krasnodar and all the ladies are singing Christina Aguilera songs, so now I don't hear Krasnodar. You know, so I, I'm losing contact as I as I travel some places. You, know, you go to Jamaica, you hear Jamaica. Everyone in the world is in touch with Jamaica through the music of reggae. You know, I come to Krasnodar. I want to hear what Krasnodar sounds like, and I had difficulty this time that we were doing for the name fest. Um, I urge them, the contestants, strongly to sing in, in Russian. If they are having a conversation with me, I wanted to hear and feel what what they wanted to say. So, um, in fact, the winner sang a Russian song. The, the best in show was a Russian song. And for me, it was it was a great moment. And it was a very proud moment for me to hear um, these young, young people decide to give it a chance to sing in Russian and not to sing something they think is popular because they see it on the video and they think, you know, sometimes we don't respect our own magic. We look outside. We want to move to somewhere else. We want to go to Rome. We want to see all the other wonders of the world and we sometimes don't appreciate our own uh, you know, beautiful things. So it was, it was, um, it was impressive for the festival. There's so many young people singing in, in, in Russia. There are some very, very gifted and talented artists here. I think they are sometimes confusing art and commerce, money, or, or what you feel. Two different things, yeah? So I think it, 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 it's difficult for an artist to have an opinion and to be special because they think that there is a boundary on what is possible. So they try to fit into someone else's imagination of what success is. And I think you have to be brave to redefine what success means. You know? um, so I think that uh, they need permission to be crazy and do what they want and it's okay and try things and make a new way you know instead of being slave to fashion you know the, the problem with fashion is that if you're always trying to be fashionable fashion always changes next year it must change in order to be fashionable so if you're always trying to be someone else's version of what's hip and what's now and what's what's successful, you can never catch it. You're always behind because it is always changing. You know, so until uh, the young artists decide I'm going to forge my own path, they will always be chasing someone else's passion. So I hope, um, I hope in time, little bit by little bit, you know, they can break free of the. Choking hold. Well, I I had to change what I thought success was. You know, at first everyone's telling you you have to do this, you have to do this, you, you must get this Grammy, you must uh, uh, be on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, you must all these these things they they tell you, and it has nothing to do with uh, with your truth. I mean, that's all just marketing, really. Um, I am proud to be a musician's musician. Most musicians know me. You know, if the public doesn't know me, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with this. So once I decided that um, everyone was not supposed to like me, 
it freed me up that I didn't have to try to be something for everyone. I feel I only had to be myself. So on a big stage with Sting is deceptive because I was at first I was the opening act for Sting. So when I would come on stage, nobody wants to hear me. They want to hear Sting. And I am just something that's delaying what they paid for, right? So I have to go out into a hostile audience who came to see Sting, 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 Sting. And I go on stage with a big black man and a drum, which doesn't make any sense. And so I start to sing and I, my job was to stop them from going to the toilet. Oh, it's not Sting? Okay, <laughs> you know. Stop them and make them listen is a very difficult uh, challenge. You know, and it was my challenge to make them stop and go, Wow, what is this? Wow, you know, and I have uh, some great success with this. And also there are people who go, ah, oh, man, something else for staying. Okay, I'm going to go get a beer and I'm going to go to the bathroom because I didn't come for this. They won't even open sometimes to, to hear it. So you realize that it's not, you know, it's not necessarily that they love you. It's sometimes it's just crowd control just being an entertainer and giving them something interesting to see. But the audience that has stayed with me f for my whole career, uh, these are people that I've, that I've touched, you know, actually touched. And we have a connection with them. So I've had 60 years of career with people that understand and are connected to me. So for me, that's success. If I can actually connect to people and people come to me 20 years later and say, ah, you know, I met my husband because if we went to hear your music, it was very romantic, da, 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 you know, or uh, people that say, um, I listened to your music when, when I was a baby because my mother always listened to your music. So I grew up hearing and you're like, wow, I didn't know I was in your family, so connected to, to, to your life, you know. And later, this is the things that are important for, for me. You know, I travel the world, yes, but I don't remember how much I got paid in these places. I remember the places, I remember the people, I remember the experiences. I don't remember that it was a lot of money or not a lot of money. You know, as I look back, this weren't, wasn't important in the end. This is not the part that was important. You know, Herbie Hancock, you know, it's great. He just shows you the possibilities of when you think you are connecting from when you actually are connected, you know, when you experience this master, you're like, wow, you know, he is really, you know, connected to his conversation. You know, it's too easy for us to be a caricature of what we think people want to see. You know, but to tell your truth every night and how you really feel is is a challenge, and it is, um, it is, uh, you are exposed. And it's easy if I put on a suit and I go, I put on my costume and I go on stage and I do whatever they expect me to do. I'm not at risk. I'm just playing a character, right? Like an actor who, these are the lines they gave me. I'm just doing my lines. You know, we don't really know that person. But in music, you are exposing all of your emotions, all of your good and bad, your faults, everything. <sighs> Here I am. So you can't hide. You know, this is a, a hard thing to do. If you're an introvert and you don't want people to really know, you know, your failures and your fears, and then you don't give it. You know, but people can people know if you if you're cheating. Just like your girlfriend knows if you really are in love or you just like. Um, Let's go to sleep now. Mm, you know? They can tell the difference, you know. So I suggest don't say what you think they want you to hear. Say what you feel. If they love it, then you connect it. If they don't like it, it won't last anyway. You know, they're not gonna believe you. Once they find out you're lying, you know, they're on to something else. So I say Give them your heart. Be brave, like in love. You know. 
No. 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 Um, I don't have control of those things. I have control of the quality of the music. I have control of telling my story. I have control of um, choosing to, to, to touch someone or choosing to um, um, remind them of someone else they love, karaoke or singing someone else's hit song. Um, I have a choice. I make, I make the choice. These are the things I can control. I can control what I create and what I give. What they do with it, I don't always have control. I sing a, I sing a beautiful song and it may be about someone who crushed my heart, you know? And they want me to sing it at a wedding. And you're like, but it's a sad song. It's not about happy ending. It's about, you know? And, but for them, it means something else. I don't have control of how they hear the music. I only have control uh, of, you know, of my artistic side. That's all I have. You know, I don't have control of the radio, whether they play it or not. You know, maybe politics, maybe somebody's paying, maybe they just don't like it. I don't have control of that. So I let it go. You know, my job, create the art, you see what you want to see. Huh? The purity is not in starving for the music. If I work at a restaurant, I'm working for my music so that I can eat, so that I can continue, so that I can make the music. If I am teaching what I know to help, to make money, so that I can learn and experience and see the world and experience different things so I can make the music. Everything I experience is music. If I'm a painter, everything I see and experience comes from my brush onto the canvas. You know, if I am an architect, everything I look at, I see as a building. I see as potential idea for something through my art. What you do affects the art. So if you do nothing, you have nothing to talk about. If all you do is sit in the studio and work on your music with no new information, no connection to people, no connection to experiences, then your music has no conversation. It's like speaking to someone who's never done anything and never gone anywhere. What do you talk about? Uh, they might be really good and know their vocabulary, every word, they can speak, Great, they, but they have nothing to say. Like my mother says, you can't sing of life unless you live it. So if you're not out living it, having victories, struggling, falling in love, falling out of love, doing bad things, good things, all these, all these things is music. You know, it's our job as an expert on how I feel. That's my job as an artist. All I'm supposed to do is have my opinion and share it with you. Period. You can like it or not like it. That's your choice. It's not my job to make you like it. You know, my job is to tell my truth, to tell my story the best way I can and share my experiences. That's all I can do. You know, it's all I can do. Lawyers who don't care about the music. Accountants, they don't care about the music. They care about the money. So, oh, this one sold a lot. This must be really good. And they don't, they're not, they don't, they're for the art. You know, they're there for the control and for the money. And it's a difficult thing if you choose to be an artist for the sake of quality and exploration and uh, to be a pioneer to, to create something new. It's difficult because the lawyers and accountants, they don't know how to control that. They hate artists. They sign an artist, or they, they sign an act because it sounds like someone else that they already know how to control. So instead of saying to you, oh yes, he's interesting, let me find a million people that like what you do. They don't say that. They say, I want you to do what these people 
sound like this because we know how we have a million people that like this. So you must be here so that we can work with you. Right now, that's kind of the way things are right now because before a record, a recording studio cost a lot of money, you know, six hundred thousand dollars an hour to make a project. So the average person couldn't do it, right? So you needed like a loan shark, you know, someone who's going to give you the money and then take a high interest rate, like the record companies, you know, so. We, we do everything from you and you get 10% after you pay us everything from your 10%. You know, this is like a criminal in any other business. And then once we pay you back, then we still own 90% of it. So you still, after you pay back your loan, you still don't own it. Is this too crazy? Okay. Um, with the internet, now we don't need the expensive studios. You have a laptop. You have a kid in the basement with a microphone, okay, you know, auto-tune some stuff so you don't even know the guy can't sing, you know, put in some beats that he stole from some other record, he didn't even have to pay the musicians, you know, right, here it is, okay, okay, here, it's my creation, no, it's not, <laughs> you know, but because it's now so easy and the record companies have decided that they're, they are actually useless because they didn't develop new artists. They only sucked the life out of what they had and replaced it with more of the same. You know, so now only the five-year-olds are getting serviced and not the rest of us. You know, adults, we don't get music anymore. We don't get new music. We get a remake of some old classic that we already know. You know so there are not a lot of people creating new paths and new directions for us. Just because we're old doesn't mean we're not hip. We still can hear, we still want to, you know, to explore things. So I think because of the internet, the, the quality level is not as high because it's too easy. You know, if you have to earn a lot of money to go into the studio, you kind of should be good or no one's going to give you the money for one. Um, you have to truly commit to doing it if you're losing all this money. You, you, you've got to make sure that you're not wasting the money. So you, you, your quality level was at least, I think the quality level, level was better, but the labels lost track of the art. It became about the money. And once they became about the money, they lost track with the artist. And the problem with the 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 corporations, I believe, is that they don't have contact with the artist, what's on the street. You know? Now you can hear it, but nobody's paying for it. Music is free. So that's death to, um, uh, to the industry, really. There's no way to pay for anything. You know? but we have a kid in, our, in, our, in our, one, of, one of our contests who said, you know, I have a million or you know, two million hits, you know, but he can't sing, you know, but everyone knows him because he has... He has these little hits from the internet. First, I think I want to be a musician. No, I don't really want to be a musician. Now I want to be a reality TV star. Uh, okay, so you weren't really passionate about the music ever. You know, even if, well, I think I want to act because more people will see me. So you don't care about the craft that we spent our whole life you know, working on so that we're uh, in a position to like to be a vessel for this great art. We only care about the celebrity, and people don't care what the celebrities do. The most famous celebrities have no talent, right? You know, if you think of like what's the Hilton girl? You know, it's a big everyone knows Paris Hilton. I shouldn't say names, but the uh, Kardashians. Do they do anything? I don't know. I don't know. They're just TV. Are they fashion people? Are they, you know, they were celebrities first, right? One, I think, because he has a big ass, maybe. So he was famous, and then it, I, 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 I'm trying to imagine going to a concert and okay, 
do something. No, no, that's not it. You know, I, so most of the kids, that's what they see. Again, five years. Oh, I want to be that. I want to have that attention. How come people don't love what I do? They don't. They don't care what I had for lunch today. No one ever asked me. I want the attention. I want to. You know, pay attention to me. Pay attention to me. And I think the child in us, which is what our industry has been reduced to, craves attention. You know, not excellence of art. You know, in America, we're taking art out of the school, taking music out of the school. So we don't have a chance to learn it anymore. So I teach at uh, Brooklyn College of Music, which is the, probably the most famous contemporary music school in the world. And the very special school, and it's a different philosophy. When you're teaching art, an artist, you can't teach all art the same way or you get the same result. And it's the opposite of art. We try to empower them to work on their own process, their own system, you know, because this is what makes it come out special. If, um, if you two think about way back when, the, when you, um, you, like a family reunion or something, uh, your family reunion's gonna mean something very different than Oleg's family reunion, right? So it, all your experiences count for your decision making. What you've done, what you've seen, where you've gone, you know, ups and downs, all these things count. They mean something. So when I when I ask you something and you, you want to answer it, you hear my question this way, maybe there, and then back up, remember, then, then over here, and then it comes out, your answer because you're touching all of your experiences to check and to determine how you feel, what your answer is. The same for him. But his may go here and then back, you know, to this experience and like, oh, no, 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 oh, wait, 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 she smokes, wait, oh, no. You know, okay, I don't trust this or that. For whatever reasons, his experiences are. So we can't make them like a math test, do this and then carry that over and it's going to have the answer. Everyone, every artist has a different process. And instead of helping them to, to um, make it better their way, we always try to force them into a way that makes sense to us. Teacher can't do that because everyone has different strengths. What works for me won't work for someone else because they have different strengths. You know, they're strong in another way. They're, you know, or they have problems like, I cover my problems this way. You know, that might be where they're strong. So we can't, you know. And the biggest challenge for an artist is to create and perfect their process of why they choose things, why they feel a certain way. We just have to be experts on how you feel. And it's difficult for us to, as teachers to say, I need you to examine how you feel as opposed to you should feel this way. This will bring you success. This is, we can't say that, and so, but our, it's difficult to grade that. How do you how do you give someone a grade? They may not understand it right now. It might be five years from now. They go, ah, it's so simple. Ah, you know, we told the, the contestants um, when they come on stage. Sometimes they're nervous, and I told them, I said, you know. You're nervous because you're trying to sing someone else's music. You're trying to sing someone else's song. You're trying to be Christina Aguilera. You're trying to sound exactly like Josh Groban. This song, you sounded like Adele. So now you come on stage thinking, I have to remember all these things from Adele, as opposed to coming on stage and saying, this is how I feel. I know how to do me. So all I have to do is know that if I do what I feel, I, I can't be wrong. And they need to grab this power and understand that my way is my best way. You know, but they don't have the confidence yet. Because they see, I have to sing like this so I can be on the MTV. I have to, I have to wear this, I have to push this up, and I've got to, you know, 
skirt, that's a, you know, all these things because that's what I see success is. And there's no one saying, no, no, no. Success is you telling your opinion, giving your perspective, um, and making these people understand your value. My job is uh, the artist within, artistic, you know, artistic self is what I teach, to value who you are. If you don't value who you are, what do you, what do you have to say? Then why do I want to hear it? You know? And this is one of the problems I found with, with, the Russian, with the Russian music. They don't value the Russian language. They don't value that their perspective is special and different. You know? And they say, well, everything we hear is English rock and roll is in English, or, or it's this, or you know, Spanish love songs. It's always some other language. I said, no, no, you need to create your space. You know? Yeah, but it's hard and, and it's it's hard in, in Russian. The language is difficult. So how do they expect the rest of the world to appreciate songs in Russian when they don't, when the artists don't? You know, they don't try to make it their own and make it hip, make it whatever it is. Make it pop music, whatever you want. It's it's your direct link. So they're singing in a language they don't even understand, but they expect us listeners to go, yeah, I feel that, that you connected. They can't be. Russian soul is, is very soulful. You, anytime you have this level of, of um, difficulty and struggle and find a way to put the smile on the face through it all. And like, eh, we, make, we do what we can do. And we, we happy, we, we, we still love each other, we still make love to each other. And there is no problem that can kill our spirit. You know, I see Russian soul is very, very strong. Very strong. Which is why it was confusing me that the Russian soul wasn't dominating the music. You know, I expect, I, I expected it to. I expected it to, you know, and I saw glimpses of it in the festival. So I know I'm right because, like I said, the young, young people who sang with this Russian fire, <gasps> undeniable, so big, so great, you know. But there's that voice, uh, money, money, no, money, you know. Religion for me is very difficult because I have traveled the world. So I've seen many, many different religions, beautiful people in each, good and bad, in all. So it's difficult to think that only one group of people has the answer for all the people. It's difficult for me to, you know, to, to make this make sense. You know, because you know, Buddhists and beautiful Hindus and the Muslim people, there's many, many stars in, in, in the people. I think. The answer must be with all of us. Each must share their information, and the answer lies you know, in the unity of the people. As long as we're here and there, nothing is the truth. The truth is only from us together. So I am religious in that I do believe that nature has a plan. Do I think it's one guy upstairs making notes and pushing buttons? No. No. Everything that is here was always here. There is no new stuff, you know? People die, they go into the dirt and then make something else happen. So this machine, I, I have trouble giving it a name. But I do think there's a force, a, a spirit, a sensibility you know, to it all. It makes sense and it always has. And long after humans are gone, and our time is finished, it will go on as something else. You know, and all that was here will still be here. You know, and it goes through the air, it comes down to something else or, or whatever. Nothing, there is no new gasoline, there is no new, new oil. We change it into something else, but everything is still here. It has not left. And who is God for me? Nature for me. 
scientifically in nature. Because I think that um, we are so small in the universe that we're, we're, the, we're the same as, as the atom, which has its own world and its own planets and its own microscopic societies. And, and we, when you look at the whole universe, we look like a close-up, you know, of, of, a, of a, you know, of a hair. The meaning of our life is we are doing it. You know, if our job is to, to, to give to this organism that we are, that fuels the thing that we fuel, which fuels the thing that it fuels, you know, like the things below us that are smaller, which create things that we need that are so that we can pass it on to the next level up. You know, I think it's all the same. Some smaller, some larger. So big that we can't see it. You know, so the meaning of life is, you know, to to um, contribute the best way we can. That's why we're here. We must have a purpose. So if we can be honest about what we have to give, that's what we're supposed to do. Give this. If we have a talent, we're supposed to give it. You know, if we have an intellect, we're supposed to use it. If we um, if we have a passion, we're supposed to inspire and motivate others to use theirs. You know, there is no one purpose for all. I think we're all different because we have different um, skills, different power, different uh, purposes. You know, but the one common purpose is to do our best. Is that's all we can do. Some, I need to be the worst version of ourselves so we can inspire others to be their best. You know, I think we all have a, 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 a role in the game, you know, in the play. Remember how we talked about having a gourmet restaurant? This festival I want to be a gourmet festival where you go to find truth and root and people that want to profess their love. It's a serenade festival. Everyone fest, uh, celebrates uh, love all week, right? So many singers are coming to to sing and dedicate to someone. Like maybe they dreamed of being a singer, but they are working in the hospital and they need the money. You know, they can't. It didn't work, but they still have the passion. So they come and they sing this their, their one song to someone they love, and they have a professional band behind them, like like a fantasy. In a festival, wow, this is great! I can go and sing and, and rehearse my music, and I can stand there and and profess my love and be passionate. You know, that's what this festival is about. When you come through the town, there are people in the windows of the buildings singing into the street. You know, and you're listening, yes, this is great. And then you know, so it's a different festival, uh, not for the money. It's clearly because there's no way to charge for this, but the experience for people to come and and feel the love in my village is beautiful. You know, so the future of that, I don't have control of. All I can do is plant the seed, and we put the water and see what it, what it does. And uh, as director, I can control it the best I can to keep it honest. But we'll see. Build it, they will come, we hope. I, I'm very expensive. <laughs> but I want to, uh, because when I come, it takes me out of the market for my other shows. I can't maintain, you know, so I have to think about, I have to think about that. I want to do it because for the right reasons I want it to happen. And I've already spent a lot of time and money and, and uh, energy this far to, 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 to do what I can. And uh, I would love, to, I want to be involved because I, I can see it and I understand it. But uh, there's no way I can say a fee. I mean, I'm priceless. So whatever you want to pay me is uh, not enough, you know. But what I want is too much. So somewhere in the middle, <laughs> there is an answer. But uh, uh, well, we will see. How to develop the vocal experience? Uh -huh. um, I will, for me, I want to, my father would tell me. Don't go on stage and play the music, as in reading it 
music is supposed to be this. He says, go on stage and make the music in this moment to be fluent in the language. You can't have a conversation when they haven't asked the question yet. But if you're fluent and you understand, then you can react, you know, and engage in the conversation. So I, one exercise I would uh, uh, tell them to do is to, when they're watching the television, turn the um, sound down, no sound, and sing what you see. If it's a chase, <laughs> if you're playing it and you see it, okay, play with what comes to mind. If it's a love, if a love scene and there's a kiss, <laughs> then, then you see what comes out of you naturally. So you can discover who you are and what your choices are, what your natural choices are. And, uh, and try these things to attach music to everything you see, you know, and smell and eat it. What does this sound like? Yeah, this sounds like, you know, and try to make connections to all your elements because it gives you the information you need, you know, on how you feel, how you think, who you are. You know, we don't spend a lot of time discovering our taste. We always like, oh, I want to sound like Ticaria. Oh no, I really, I really want to sound more like, like, uh, 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 you know, Marcus Miller, Marcus Miller, or you know, or Pat Metheny. Ooh, I want, he is so clean. I want, you know, instead of us discovering our own genius, you know, we're always worried about someone else to be because we don't trust and respect ourselves yet. So you have to learn who you are. Like, oh yeah, I always do that. I always play that whenever I see, okay, and accept it, you know, and this is a hard thing to do because there's no easy way. And remember, you are developing your own process, and this is one way that some people who are visual, it helps them, and, you know, and other people can read a book and just imagination, what's the soundtrack to that? What would this sound like if, you, if you're reading something? Oh yeah, I think it would be my... You can't get with heavy metal guitar, what, uh, reggae and uh, what, you know, and see what comes out of you. And don't try to plan it, don't fix it. Try to trick yourself into just being natural and reactive. Um, only if you give your permission, yourself permission to, to do it, you must be prepared to fail. The best way to learn is to fail, you know, and not care. It's difficult because you go on stage and suddenly, <gasps> you know, if I say to you, I want you to sing as badly as you can, you know, the one who sings the worst wins. You're like, yeah, I could do that. And you try to, you try to sing bad and you just, ah, you know, and you try so hard. And then I say, okay, now sing good. You're like, oh, oh. You know, you don't commit the same way. You you're scared. You, you, you know, you don't you don't try the same way because you're afraid of the failure. If you take the failure out, people are just like yeah, let's get crazy. Yeah, you know. I was very excited for this opportunity because in my music I always hear big bands and other different arrangements, but it's always too expensive to travel and to try to do it. It's not possible too many people, too much orchestration, and it's difficult for me as an artist because I'm more improvisational, and with a big band, all these people have to be exactly in the same place all the time. So if I want to do something in this moment, it's not possible. It, it, it makes it difficult for them. You know, so I had to learn how to trust that they would be where they're going to be, and I have to find my own space within the structure. And this was different for me. And they have a very different groove than what I'm used to. You know, their groove is, you know, there's not so much swinging in the pocket, you know, in, in, the, in the African music and Western music and, you know, and the black music. It's, 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 there's some subtle things that are different. But uh, it, was, it was a great experience for me, you know. Lovely, lovely guys, you know. I still remember the quote, there is no sex in the Soviet Union, you know. <laughs> Yeah, this one, this was a, because of a song we did, uh, Don't You Talk To Me Like That. You know, it's kind of got a swing to it. And uh, they were reading the notes. 
boom, 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 boom. And it was like, there was no sexy, there was no, you know. So Jennifer, my wife, stops the show. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. It's supposed to be sexy. It's romantic. It's, and then like, there's no sex in the Soviet Union. <laughs> and we didn't understand that it was like some joke from television or something. Yeah. And we were like, what? What's going on? But this is, uh, we laugh all the time about this. My uh, son is a, is a, uh, was top of his college for filmmaking. So he's a producer. But then he decided he doesn't want to be a producer. Now he wants to be a, a, a rap star. <laughs> so he's like, he's doing his own music and managing other artists in Los Angeles. And my uh, youngest son, uh, Poot, is he is in New York NY, uh, uh, New York University NYU, and he is um, studying gaming, you know, and fashion. His dream was to find another platform for music. And when they're creating these games, if you get to this level, you can now hear the new Lynx music, or and if you get to this level, then now you can you get to hear this song. Or, or the, so there's other ways. Since most children listen to music as they're playing these games, you know. So I want to uh, try to help him uh, f uh, find the resources to to, to to do that, and maybe I create a record or, or a project for him to use. You know, when they get into the car for the race and you can change the radio and say, ah, what's the new song for that? Oh, wow, okay. Because they don't listen to radio as much anymore. It's all internet and the gang. This started in uh, Slovakia and then in, in Kenya. I was doing a thing with uh, producers without borders because uh, in this world now, only rich kids can record. So now we're losing the music of, um, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, economically challenged people because they can't afford the process. And then someone would say, well, they just get a computer and make it on the computer. Some people don't have a computer even. So we wanted to um, take uh, great producers to work with uh, the producers in Russia or wherever the country is that we do this in. and. They would teach them some of the ways of the West because if they're only thinking, oh, I want to be like what's on the radio, which has a certain um, uh, quality, just like you as a film, uh, a film guy, well, what's the best camera? You know, okay, I need to, either we can make our own or we can get the best, you know, that exists. So in this situation, we want to introduce them to, uh, like Steve Van Arden, who was the um, um, uh, engineer for Stevie Wonder, you know, would come and we get different producers that can help these kids make Russian music the best way that they can and share whatever we have that they can use to help you know, the industry. But we're making a compilation record. So now you've got 12, you know, 12 kids or 13, whatever we put on the compilation. And each of these kids can't afford to make an entire CD by themselves, right? But we can put them all on one CD and then the radio station now have 12 songs that they can play that are top quality, you know, recorded and produced. Uh, during this week, it's like a boot camp. Uh, they can come here and have a have a discussion on how to give an interview, or what not to answer, or how to manipulate these things. They don't know, you know. So we don't just throw them into the world and hope that they do okay and say something stupid, you know, and don't cross the legs and the, you know, all these simple things that we can can share that they don't even know they need to know. Um, once we have this compilation record, we will film the process of uh, hopefully with some of the Russian songwriters to help to create uh, with the, you know, the Russian mindset uh, and language, because it's difficult sometimes to, to do this. And some of, these, some of these kids aren't songwriters, so they will need help you know, with a songwriter. But we film the process. We see them growing, we see them learning. It's not a competition, we're not kicking anybody out. We're watching them develop, watching them grow, and the audience is discovering them and creating a personal bond. Well, I love this kid, he's gonna, oh, he's so much, he's getting better, 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 this is great. This guy's great, he's learning how to dance, he's learning how to do whatever it is he wants to do. Learning how to trust himself or herself, 
and we get to see this, you know. So then now we have this development of all these these kids, and we took the competition out because this is a problem with most of these shows is that they're singing something only because they think they can win and they want to impress you as opposed to this is who they are and this is how they feel. So we want to create the environment that they really can get to their truth and we applaud it instead of like, eh, his truth was better than your truth. This is, doesn't work this way. You know, so once we have this uh, compilation CD or whatever and we can get it to different radio stations like, this is what the sound of Krasnodar. It's amazing. They, it's all these great kids that you didn't even know. And they can now reach the different DJs um, because, wow, let's check it out. It's our own people. Let's see. Oh, this is great. Who did the, who's, who's, so who's playing guitar? Slash from the Guns N' Roses? Yeah. We just, you know, we call up friends and then we make, we make it happen. You know, and then uh, from this you can take a tour. You know, we can go to Vienna, we can, we can go to France, you know, this is the sound of Krasnodar. Well, and from there you go, it depends on the money, how much money we can get together to do this. Hopefully everyone will donate because it's important to, um, as we've been saying all week, it's important to water the flower in the desert instead of trying to plow and make a farm in the desert. You know, you take the ones who who shine and you, and you water them and you nourish them so they don't die, you know. And sometimes we worry so much about, let's just, you know, make it for the masses and, and try to be celebrities. No, no, no. We take the, we take the flowers that you have, you know. Let's, let's support that first, you know. And then other flowers will be brave enough to, to, to try next time, you know. Well, they're all different, so that's 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 difficult. I mean, I've, I love Stevie Wonder just because he's a genius. Um, Taj Mahal is great because it's naturally my first experience, but it's not my favorite. I mean, it's like I don't have a favorite color. You know, I don't have a favorite food. I like to experience all the different uh, conversations. So I, I can't answer that. There's my favorite. I mean, I love Javon, who's Brazilian, but I've never played with him. But he's a great influence for me. You know, Phoebe Snow. There's, there's a lot of different people that um, have inspired me. But there's no one I want that, that I love to play with more than any, any of the others. You know? I can't answer that. We are all the same. We go through our process. They have different information than we had. They get information fast, fast. They have short attention spans. You know, like, okay, well, I got one song, psh, you know, they don't listen to a whole CD of something. Um, they don't pay for music. They don't value it because it's information. They don't view it as, as art. They view it as just, an, you know. So we have to find a way to uh, um, allow them to discover and redesign to find the feeling and the emotion in this way. We can't because our head is is uh, tuned for something different. So we just have to find a way to, okay, I hope they find their way and find the art in this and find a way to use these new tools, you know, to again come back to the essence of, of, uh, of, of uh, the point of the art. You know, so I think they will be okay because they have to be. When we're gone, we have no say anyway. You know, we'll all be dead soon and it will be only the children, so. There are enough that want to learn the instruments and want to know the old ways. <clears throat> Just like anything else, you know, there's always someone who wants to know how to hand uh, bind a book, you know, by hand those does. There's always one guy somewhere who wants to, to know how to make a shoe without a machine. You know, so we hope that these, uh, these um, trades will survive.